Hello, my name is William Salisbury. Today we're going to cover the creation of views in your model space, the application of those views to your layout viewports, and then the reduction in the size of those views by the use of the 2D rep tool to create 2D representations. So we'll start off with a 3D object. This has been um, brought in as an XREF, as you can see here from double clicking it. It has uh, those XREF ties. Um, normally with complex drawings, you'll have several smaller components being brought in uh, through their respective XRefs. This is a problem for drafters, is sometimes it can slow down smaller, older machines. So the goal in this exercise is to create the views from the 3D object, um, 2D rep those views out, so that we can save the space and uh, the processing power. So we have a 3D object, we can go ahead and type in viewbox. Go ahead and name it. Object one. Specify our first corner. Specify our second corner. Uh, it's probably better to do this in a 2D perspective instead of an isometric one, but you can do either. Just make sure that you're respective to your Z. Like in this case, we need a hundred feet difference between the two points to give it its depth. Um, you can pick individual perspectives on this, top, bottom, left, and right, and that's kind of relative to this view cube up here, as you can see top B from this perspective. So we're going to grab all of those, nice and easy, and click OK. When we do that, we can see here in the view manager that it makes those with the prefix of the name that you selected, and the suffix being the actual perspective on that object. So now that we have that, you can see that the red box is there representing the view box. You can delete this box out afterwards, and your views are still present in your view manager. So that's just a quick representation. If you wanted to edit those, it, the easiest way would be to double click on that red uh, cube that was made. But since we're not going to edit any further, that would be fine. Okay, so we'll take and go to our layout. We're going to use NV for make view. Create a couple perspectives here. For this lesson, we're just going to cover the top and the sides. It's a little bit tighter. Grab ourselves a bottom perspective as well. In some cases, besides the regular perspectives, a client may also want, just as a nice detail, to have an isometric perspective to give the, the drawing holder an idea of what it looks like in the real world. So, because sometimes the 2D views can leave a couple things hidden. Um, so, we're going to go ahead and create our viewports, type in view. And we're going to assign these views to the viewports that we have established. So top, separate, apply. We say OK. Or you can keep going. Let's go ahead and get out of that port. Um, our left side, set, apply. Get perspective. OK. Uh, right perspective. Hit that set current apply. <laughs> okay. And you get. Um, we'll say from the front. Set current apply. Okay. Now for this other one, we want it to be an uh, isometric perspective, so we're going to swap this from custom view to southwest isometric. And automatic form fills that. Since this is a 3D object, we want to use a shade plot. In this case, we will use Legacy Hidden, which will get rid of the background line work. Okay. For the rest of these, we want them to be at the same scale. You can select all the different viewports and down here at the bottom, go from, let's say, one quarter. Ooh, that's way too large. So, you know, you fiddle with it to find out what's the, what's the best for your circumstances. So we need much. Let's go ahead and go to one inch, this one foot. Not going to work, let's go really small. One thirty second. Getting closer at that point. 
maybe a little bit larger than this is too. Sometimes you can use the visual of your viewports. Just go ahead and type in RU for regenerate. Let's go ahead and center this. That seems to fit just the way we want it to. So now we'll use construction lines to align our viewports with their objects. So that there, that there. So this lets us move that object. Move this object. Now your viewports more often than not should be set to depth points. What that means is that this outer line will be printed. So I can come in here and just make sure that I'm moving the object based on its own geometry. Grab the right. Yeah. And as you can see now all of that's in alignment. This one needs to shift a bit. So I'm shifting in its viewport. And as you can see now, everything is lining up just the way you want it to. Okay, with all that done. Now, because this is in our example, we're going to assume that this is a very detailed 3D graphic, not as simple as the one shown here. And we don't want to keep all that stuff in our model because it slows down the drawing. So, that means we need to use a 2D rep, a 2D representation. I can do it by obvious or viewports. We're going to hit enter and hit viewports by default. We can do all three at once, all four at once, I'm sorry. And it gives you an option on how you want the 3D objects uh, represented. How do you want this thing broken down? So in this case, we don't have center lines. We just have solids. But we'll do solids and lines just for this good generic to use. Turn viewports off afterwards. You do want to turn your viewports off so that you don't have double lines in some cases. Um, this is great if you wanted to get rid of the viewports altogether. Now you have that, and that's just 2D uh, line work. Also, if there were a change to this 3D object in the future, you could wipe out the 2D objects that have been brought to the front. You can select these viewports, go to your properties palette, and turn them back on. And that would mean you could re-xref re in. The, the, the changed material and then do the 2D representation again. So this allows you to keep it live basically uh, without having that 3D material bulking down your drawings. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Thanks.